Welcome back, students. I'm so happy to see so many of you back with us today for our Making Meaning lessons. We're working on visualizing this week. And if you're new today, I'm so happy you're here. My name is Ms. Brandt, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Rising Star Elementary School. Go Firebirds! I'm so happy to be here with you today. So as we get started reading today, I have some very special books to share with you. The only thing that you're going to need to do your job today is somebody to turn and talk to when I let you know it's time. Now, if we're in class, you usually have your assigned turn and talk partner on the carpet. But since we're at home, you don't have that person. So let me give you some ideas and you can help me come up with some more of who you can turn and talk to. If you're at home, you could turn and talk to somebody in your family who's there with you. Maybe a grandma or a grandpa or an auntie, uncle, cousin, parents, brother, sister. If nobody's there with you, don't worry. You can always talk to a stuffed animal, to a pet like a dog or cat or fish, or even an imaginary friend. Finally, if you want to give me a call, you can do that. You can pick up your phone, give me a call, and tell me what you think. I'll make sure to listen and share out what I hear. So go ahead, take a moment, make sure you have a good turn and talk partner. All right, readers, let's get ready to go. So those of you who are here with us last time, you remember my turn and talk partners. I have two. One of them is Tiggy the Tiger. Can you say hi? Hi. Tiggy's not shy at all. He's so excited that you're here today, just like me. I have another turn and talk partner too. This turn and talk partner you might remember is named Saki the Sock. Saki's a little bit shy, so we have to be really quiet so he can say hi, okay? Hi. Good job, Saki. All right, so when I turn and talk today, I'm gonna turn and talk to Saki and Taigi. And remember, you can always call me if you don't have a turn and talk partner. All right, let's get started. So. This week, we are talking about visualizing. Can you say visualizing with me? Let's try it. Ready? Visualizing. Very nice, students. We're going to practice that skill today with this book, some of you might remember, called Gregory the Terrible Eater. Some of you will remember. What does terrible mean? You can shout it out. Tell me. You got it. Terrible means very bad. Now. In this book, remember, there was a goat named Gregory, and you can go ahead and look at the cover to help your brain remember what was happening, because I'm going to ask you our first question. What do you remember happening in this story? Hmm. What do you remember happening in this story? I'll give you a moment to think, and then this time, I want you to give me a call and tell me. What do you remember happening in Gregory the Terrible Eater? You can say, I remember. All right, ready? Pick up your phone. Think for a minute. OK, go ahead and call me and tell me when you're ready. Oh my goodness, readers, I'm going to hang up my phone. I had so many calls. Lots of students, kindergartners and first graders, told me that they remember this book is about a goat named Gregory who does not want to eat junk. Gregory wants to eat foods that are healthy, but his parents, mother and father goat, don't want him to eat those foods. I even heard one first grader tell me that he remembered that Gregory ate so much junk by the end of the book, his tummy hurt. That's right, go ahead and hold your tummy. At the end, Another student told me they remembered Gregory's problem got solved when he started to eat a little junk and a little healthy food, and his family was happy. Go like this if you agree with those answers. And remember, if you remembered something else, that's okay. So for those of you who weren't here with us yesterday, let's take a really quick look at our book so we can help our brains know what to expect. Gregory the Terrible Eater. In the beginning of this story, Gregory was feeling a little bit blue or sad because his parents loved to eat junk like shoes and coats and pants and jackets. But Gregory just wanted to be eating healthy foods. 
here in the middle, Gregory is still thinking about those healthy foods like carrots and fish and fruits, even though his parents are munching on newspaper or junk. Remember, munching? That's right. It means chewing. Later on in our book, you might remember that Gregory went to visit Dr. Ram. And Dr. Ram told Gregory's parents to have him eat just a little bit of everything. And then Gregory's parents did something. They went to the town dump or junkyard where there's lots of trash and they brought back many things for Gregory to eat. He ate them all and then he got a tummy ache. He was moaning and groaning. Finally, at the end of our story, Gregory learned to eat just a little bit of everything. Some healthy foods and some junk and it was just right. And at the end of the story, just like so many of you said, Gregory's family and Gregory were so happy to be together eating their food together. So, remember our skill? Who remembers? What did I say? Nice, you got it. Visualizing. Let's say it again. Visualizing. When we visualize, you can even point to your brain, we make pictures in our mind or maybe even a movie, maybe even moving pictures that help us understand the story. So when you read words on a page, you make a picture in your mind of what's going on. Now, I know that I just showed you some pictures, but this time, readers, I'm gonna reread Gregory the Terrible Eater, and you are going to have to visualize. I will not show you the picture, I know. So, let's get started. When I say turn and talk, make sure that you're either calling me or turning and talking to your partner. Gregory the Terrible Eater by Mitchell Charmant, illustrated by Jose Oruego and Ariane Dewey. For Andrew, the goat who tried to, and the goat who tried to eat his coat. Once there was a goat named Gregory. Gregory liked to jump from rock to rock, kick his legs into the air, and butt his head against walls. I'm an average goat, said Gregory. Who remembers what average means? You got it, average means normal. But Gregory was not an average goat. Gregory was a terrible eater. Every time he sat down to eat with his mother and father, he knew he was in for trouble. Ooh, I'm noticing some readers pointing to their brains. I can tell they're starting to visualize in their own heads the words I'm reading. Good job, keep it up. Would you like a tin can, Gregory? asked Mother Goat. Uh, no thanks, said Gregory. How about a nice box, a piece of rug, and a bottle cap, asked Father Goat. Bah, said Gregory unhappily. Well, I think this is a meal fit for a goat, said Mother Goat, as she chewed on an old shoe. It certainly is, said Father Goat, as he ate a shirt, buttons and all. I don't know why you're such a fussy eater, Gregory. I heard so many re readers remember fussy. It does, it means picky, good job. I'm not fussy, said Gregory. I just want fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, bread, and butter. Good stuff like that. <gasps> wow, I see so many of you pointing to your brains. We're actually gonna stop here, and I want you to visualize. What do you picture in your brain when you hear those words? And what words helped you visualize that? Go ahead, point to your brain and think. What did you visualize when I said, I just want fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, bread, and butter? All right, when you're ready, you're gonna go ahead, give me a call or turn and talk to your partner. What did you visualize? You can say, I pictured. All right, wow, readers. I heard so many great visualizations and I wanna go ahead and share what Tyge told me. Remember, Tyge's not shy. Tyge told me, right Tyge, that he thought he visualized a grocery bag full of fresh food like vegetables and fruits. And he said the words that helped them, him were vegetables, eggs, bread, and butter. Thanks for sharing, Tyge. Go like this if you agree with him. Did you visualize that in your head? Wow, yeah, nice work. 
All right, let's keep reading and don't forget to make those mental pictures in your head. Mother goat stopped eating the shoe. Now what kind of food is that, Gregory, she said. It's what I like, said Gregory. It's revolting, said father goat. Remember, revolting means disgusting. It's revolting, said father goat. He wiped his mouth with his napkin. I saw a lot of you do that too, nice job. After Gregory was excused from the table, father goat said, Gregory is such a terrible eater. I wonder what's wrong with him, said mother goat. Mother and father goat ate their evening newspaper in silence. The next morning, mother and father goat were enjoying a pair of pants and a coat for breakfast. Gregory came to the table. Good morning, Gregory, said father and mother goat. Good morning, said Gregory. May I have some orange juice, cereal, and bananas for breakfast, please? Oh no, mother goat said. Do have some of this nice coat. Take a bite out of these pants, said father goat. Oh, I'm seeing so many readers point to their brains to visualize, keep it up. Bah, said Gregory, and he left the table. Father goat threw down his napkin. That does it, he said. Gregory just isn't eating right. We must take him to the doctor. Huh? Go ahead and stop here. Point to your brain. What did you picture happening when I read those words? Take a bite out of these pants, said Father Goat. Bah, said Gregory, and he left the table. How do those words help you make a picture in your brain? Go ahead and think for a little bit, and when you're ready, you're gonna turn and talk or call me. Tell me, what did you picture, and how did those words help you? All right, readers, wow. I heard so many excellent visualizations, and I wanna share one in particular. I heard a kindergarten student call me, and she told me she visualized Gregory throwing down his napkin and running away from the table. The words that helped her were the words, bah, said Gregory, and he left the table. Wow, that reader was remembering to think about the words that helped her visualize. And I heard so many of you do the same thing. Keep it up, readers. Let's keep reading. Father and Mother Goat took Gregory to the doctor. Dr. Ram was munching on a few pieces of cardboard. Show me munching. You got it. It means chewing. What seems to be the trouble, he asked. Gregory is a terrible eater, said Mother Goat. We've offered him the best. Shoes, boxes, magazines, tin cans, coats, pants. But all he wants are fruits, vegetables, eggs, fish, orange juice, and other horrible things. What do you have to say about all of this, Gregory? Asked Dr. Ram. I want what I like, said Gregory. Makes sense, said Dr. Ram. He turned to mother and father. Goat. I've treated picky eaters before, he said. They have to develop a taste for good food slowly. Try giving Gregory one new food each day until he eats everything. That night for dinner, Mother Goat gave Gregory spaghetti and a shoelace in tomato sauce. Not too bad, said Gregory. The next day, she gave him string beans and a rubber heel cut into small pieces. The meal was good and rubbery, said Gregory. Wow, readers, I saw already you're doing it. Great job. Point to your brain and think. What do you visualize here when I read the words, the meal was good and rubbery? Ooh, all right, go ahead and think. And when you're ready, you can say, I picture or I visualize to your partner. All right, ready? Turn and talk. All right, readers, great job sharing what you visualized. Now, my special friend Saki told me what he saw in his brain, but remember, he's very shy. Here you go, Saki. Do you want to say hi? Saki told me that he remembered 
or visualized at this part of the story something really chewy. The word rubbery helped him visualize that. I even heard some kindergartners and first graders have the same visualization. Go like this if you agree with Saki. Good job. All right, let's keep reading. The next day after that, Mother Goat said, we have your favorite today, vegetable soup. But there is one condition. You also have to eat the can. Okay, said Gregory, what's for dessert? Ice cream, said Father Goat, but you have to eat the box too. Yummy, said Gregory. I'm proud of you, said Father Goat. You're beginning to eat like a goat. I'm learning to like everything, said Gregory. One evening, Father Goat asked, has anyone seen my striped necktie? Mm, not since breakfast, said Mother Goat. Come to think of it, I haven't seen my sewing basket today. I left it in the living room after supper last night. Remember, supper means dinner. I left it in the living room after supper last night. Father Goat turned to Gregory. Gregory, have you been eating between meals? Yes, said Gregory, I can't help it. Now I like everything. Well, said Mother Goat, it's all right to eat like a goat, but you shouldn't eat like a pig. Oh, said Gregory. Remember, pigs like to eat everything. Oink like a pig for me. Nice. All right, after Gregory went to bed, Mother Goat said, I'm afraid that Gregory will eat my clothes hamper. Remember, hamper means a basket where people keep dirty clothes. I'm afraid Gregory will eat my clothes hamper. Yes, and then my toolkit will be next, said Father Goat. He's eating too much. We'll have to do something about it. The next evening, just before supper, Mother and Father Goat went to the town dump. Remember, dump is like a junkyard where there's a lot of garbage. So they went to the town dump. Ooh, I'm seeing some of you visualizing here. Keep it up. <gasps> they brought home eight flat tires, a three-foot piece of barber pole, a broken violin, and half a car. They piled everything in front of Gregory's sandbox. When Gregory came home for supper, he said, what's all that stuff in the yard? Your supper, said Father Goat. It all looks good, said Gregory. Gregory ate the tires and the violin. Then he slowly ate the barber pole. <sighs> but when he started in on the car, he said, I've got a stomach ache. I have to lie down. Gregory went to his room. I think Gregory ate too much junk, said Father Goat. Let's hope so, said Mother Goat. All night, Gregory tossed and twisted and moaned and groaned. <gasps> Good job, readers, you read my mind. We're gonna stop here to visualize, so go ahead and point to your brain. Let me read this again. Think about how these words help you. All night, Gregory tossed and twisted and moaned and groaned. What do you visualize and how did those words help you do that? You can say, I visualized. Let's say it together, ready? I visualized. All right, go ahead and turn and talk and tell your partner, what did you visualize? All right, readers, great job visualizing. I heard so many excellent visualizations. I heard some students say they visualized Gregory getting tangled or mixed up in his sheets because he was turning back and forth so many times. I even heard one reader say they visualized Gregory holding his tummy and saying, oh, because it hurt so bad. Great work. Let's keep reading. The next morning, he went down for breakfast. What would you like for breakfast today, Gregory? Asked Father Goat. Scrambled eggs and two pieces of wax paper and a glass of orange juice, said Gregory. That sounds just about right, said Mother Goat. And it was. And that's the end of our story, Gregory the Terrible Eaters. Eater. Wow, readers, give yourself a big pat on the back. You did such an excellent job visualizing with me, and I'm so proud of you. Now, it is your turn. So 
when it's time, you're gonna pick a just right book for yourself and you're gonna go ahead and practice visualizing on your own when you're reading that book. You can use the paper in your activity extension to help you visualize. The paper looks like this. You'll see on there it says before reading, during reading, and after reading. And you're gonna draw the picture that you saw in your head or visualized and then you're gonna write down the words that helped you visualize that picture. All right, let's try it out together one time before you do it on your own. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and use our book, Gregory the Terrible Eater, since we just read it all together and you all did such a nice job visualizing. So let me think. Before reading, it says, look at the cover and draw your prediction. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw Gregory the goat I'm gonna draw him with a really big frown and I'm gonna draw a shoe in front of him because Gregory the goat did not wanna eat that junk. That was my prediction. The words that helped me on the cover were the words terrible, remember that means very bad, eater. All right, check it out. On my paper, I've written the book title, Gregory the Terrible Eater. And so far, I've drawn what I visualized before reading. I drew Gregory the goat frowning because he did not want to eat the junk. The words that helped me were terrible eater. All right, now, during reading, hmm, let me think. While we were reading, I really had a good visualization when we got to the page where Gregory was eating shoelaces in tomato sauce. So I'm gonna draw a big bowl of shoelaces in tomato sauce. The words that helped me visualize that were shoelace in tomato sauce. Ooh, I'm already seeing some of you go like this to show me you agree. Here we go. So during reading, I drew shoelaces in tomato sauce and I wrote those words down here because those are the words that helped me picture the shoelace in tomato sauce. All right, finally, after reading. Hmm, let me think for a minute. After we read, you know what? I really remember Gregory's mother and father were really happy with him. So I'm gonna draw three happy goats. That's what I visualized because Gregory learned to eat just the right amount. The words that helped me visualize that were just about right. All right, check it out. I drew three happy goats, Gregory, mother goat, and father goat, and I wrote the words just about right because those words really help me picture or visualize the three happy goats. So remember, when it's your turn, you can go to your activity extension page that looks like this to do the same thing. If you don't have the activity extensions yet, don't worry, you can always just use a pencil or pen and a blank piece of paper. So let me show you one more thing before I let you get started. Remember, good readers like you, always are thinking about my reading. They're always being good thinkers. They're always thinking, hmm, what is happening in my book? They're always thinking, can I read most of the words? And they're also always thinking, do I understand what I am reading? Hmm, they're always thinking that so they can choose a just right book. So now, it's your turn, readers. Today, you're gonna to practice visualizing on your own or independently. Remember, you can use the page from your activity extension or a blank piece of paper. If you, all, if you don't have a Just Right book, don't worry. So, readers, I will see you next time. I'm Miss Brandt, and I'm so happy you all joined me here today. Give me an air high five, give yourself a thumbs up, pat on the back, self hug, great work. And remember, you can check out our student online portal if you need a Just Right book. See you next time.